Hello everyone! In this video I will teach you how to implement Newton's method for solving nonlinear equations in Python from scratch. A nice thing about this video is that I will teach you how to significantly simplify the implementation of Newton's method by using Python's symbolic toolbox. A nice thing about the approach presented in this video is that you will not need to remember the formulas for computing the derivatives of the function. Instead, the code will automatically perform all the derivations and differentiations and these derivatives will be plugged in into the Newton's iteration for solving the nonlinear equation 1. Before I start with the explanations, I have to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time and energy to create this video and this post. Consequently, if you find this video useful, please consider to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let us explain the main idea of Newton's method. Our goal is to solve this nonlinear equation. That is, we want to compute x for which this equation is satisfied. That is, for which f of x becomes 0. This is a graphical representation of the main idea of Newton's method. The red line is our nonlinear equation. We want to find the point at which this red line crosses the x-axis. How to do that? Okay, so let us pick a random point, let's say a point over here, and let's call this point Xn. Now, since we know the analytical form of the function f of x, for Xn we can compute f of Xn by simply evaluating the value of the function. And this is our first point. Now. At this point, we can compute the tangent line by computing the first derivative, that's our slope, or tangent of the slope angle is equal to the first derivative. And if we extend this first derivative, we will find the second point. And the second point is xn plus 1. Now, we repeat the procedure. At this point, we evaluate the value of the function f of xn plus 1 and we have the second point. Again, at this point we compute the tangent line by computing the first derivative of this function at that point. We extend the tangent line until the tangent line crosses the x-axis and this is our third point. And we, by repeating this procedure we will basically converge to our solution under very mild conditions that I will not discuss in this video in the interest of brevity. Let us now mathematically formulate the main idea of Newton's method. The first step is to compute the slope of the function at the point xn f of xn. The slope is given by the equation 2. The slope or first derivative is equal to the tangent of this angle alpha and the tangent is this distance over this distance and you can see the final expression over here. Great! Now we can compute the slope. What's the next step? Well, the next step is to simply transform this equation such that xn plus 1, the next step, is a function of xn of f of xn and f of xn prime. That is the first derivative of f of xn. So, by expressing xn plus 1 from the equation number 2, we obtain the equation number 3. And the equation number 3 represents our Newton's method. So, x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus value of the function at the point xn divided by the first derivative of the function at the point xn. And this is our Newton's method. 
So we first pick initial guess of the solution for n equal to 0, that is we select x0. We can do selection on the basis of some a priori knowledge about our problem, or we can simply randomly select x0. And then one, once we have that x0, we can update this initial guess by propagating the equation number 4. So by propagating the equation number 4, we will obtain a sequence of points x1, x2, x3, and this sequence of point, points under some mild conditions will converge to our solution. That is to the root of the equation f of x is equal to 0. Okay, so here's one idea for selecting the initial value of x. Let this be our function and let this be x-axis. We can find the point for which the value of the function is positive. Let this point be x in the superscript 1. Then we can decrease this value of x1 and we can find another point, let's say x2 in this superscript for which the function value is negative. Now, the interval between x2 and x1 can be denoted, for example, by i. And we know that somewhere in this interval, the function should have at least one zero. That is, in the interval, there should be some value x star for which this function is equal to zero, and at least one value. So what we can do, finding x of 1 for which the function is positive, f of x is positive, and finding x2 for which the function is negative, we can simply compute x0, initial guess, as x of 1 plus x of 2. And what do you think? What do you think? Yes, divided by 2. So somewhere over here, we can take arithmetic mean of x of 1 and x of 2. And by doing so, we will generate some initial guess x0 of the solution. And this initial guess will be much closer to our x star compared to x of 1 and x of 2. Okay, so this is just a, an illustration of the idea for finding a good initial guess. Okay, so here's the code that implements Newton's method. The first step, of course, is to import the necessary libraries. In this video, I will be using two libraries. The first library is the NumPy library for basic mathematics operations, and the second library is the so-called SymPy library that implements symbolic computations. This library is very similar to MATLAB's symbolic toolbox. You basically have the same functionality here. You can define symbolic expressions, symbolic functions, symbolic equations. You can symbolically solve them. You can manipulate symbolic expressions. You can evaluate symbolic expressions. It's a very useful library. Okay, the next step is to define our function. And here I'm considering a test case of f equal to the quadratic equation. Why am I using the test case? Well, I know what are the roots of these equations, right? Of this equation. I know that the roots are minus 3 and minus 7. You can verify that by using the formula x12 is equal to minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac and everything divided by 2a. Or there is another trick to immediately see the zeros of this equation. So, I'm using the test case because by knowing where the actual solution is, I can test my code. 
right? I can see if the computed solution is close to the actual root that I know a priori. Okay, so let's execute this and let's see what happens. Now, nice thing if you will just press F, you will see one important thing happening here. Basically, my spider Python environment is calling my latex interpreter, and this latex interpreter is actually computing and nicely plotting your function. So it's nicely being plotted. Very nice and convenient, convenient approach. Much more advanced than MATLAB. Okay, now since I need the first derivative in order to implement the Newton's method, I will simply symbolically differentiate my function f. So I will say basically sim dot differentiate f with respect to x and let's see our first derivative. Again, I'm calling latex to nicely plot, so obviously the first derivative is fine. It's 2x plus 10. Okay, now that we have our function f and its first derivative, we want to define basically functions corresponding to these two quantities such that when I write f of something, I'm actually getting a numerical value. So we, we are using the basically the function or the method lambda phi. We specify the arguments x, we specify the function, and we are saying that we are using the numpy library. So by execute, executing these two line codes, that is the execute by defining the function f func that basically evaluates f and defining another function that basically evaluates the first derivative we are able to write something like this so if i want to see the value of the function at let for example my zero i should type this and i get zero if i want to get the value of the function at for example 10 i will type something like this again let's see the derivatives well let's see the derivatives again now i have a nice basically function then i can simply type 2 and here's my derivative it's a derivative of function at the point 2 and we are almost done so this is the basically function, this Newton method that implements our Newton's method. So what do we have? We have the initial value, x0. We specify it, the iteration number. So how many iterations want, we want to have? For example, 50, 100, right? We specify our function f and we specify our function df. And this is the main advantage of my approach. I'm just analytically here specifying my function you can specify sinus cosinus any analytical form of the function you want right and this code will automatically perform all the derivations and all differentiations defining basically symbolic expression derivative of symbolic expression and plugging it into basically a Newton method so going back to our function here i specify the initial case i initialize my x and I'm iterating here simply the Newton's method. I'm iterating the R equation, and once I'm done, I basically compute the residual. I evaluate my function f at the approximate solution. This value should be relatively small, and I return my x, my approximate, approximate solution, and my residual. So let's define our function, and let's finally call the function. Here I specify the point minus 2. The point is close to my minus 3, 0, right? I specify number of iteration 200, specify the function, its derivative, and let's go. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's see the solution. Okay, here's the solution, almost 3. Let's see a residual should be 0. Okay, 